Let's do it. Let's add custom HUD elements to Minecraft. Alright, we find ourselves back in Intelligent once more, and in this tutorial, we're going to be adding custom HUD elements to Minecraft, thus concluding the custom Thirst System series or sub series in the Fabric tutorials. So once again, I want to highly recommend the three previous tutorials where we added, first of all, custom keybinds, then custom networking, and then saving data on the player. Those are all pretty much necessary for this to work. But if you're just looking for how exactly can I implement some custom HUD rendering, this is probably still going to work for you. However, the entire thing basically relies on everything else. So for this, what we're going to do is we're just going to make a new package called client. And inside there, we're going to right click new Java class, and this is going to be the thirst HUD overlay class. Now this will implement the HUD render callback right here. And then we'll just hover over this implement methods, the on HUD render method right there. And there we go. Now I will copy over two identifiers that I've already prepared. And those is going to be the fill thirst and the empty thirst. Now those are just two textures inside of our textures folder inside of a custom directory called thirst. And I will be coming over both of those. And those will, of course, also be available to you. There we go. So we have them here. Of course, we want to render some images there. That should make sense. Now, when it comes to the contents of the on HUD render method, I'm going to, you know, start slow and we'll basically work our way up. So first of all, we basically want an X and Y position. And this is basically only gotten through the Minecraft client. So what we want to do is the way we want to do the following. We want to check whether or not the client is not null, right? And if it isn't, then we can get the width and the height of the actual window. So this is going to be the scaled width and the scaled height. And then what we want to do is we want to have the width and just take the exact height here. And then we can basically proceed with that. How are we then able to render, let's say, the empty thirst textures first? Well, this is going to look something like this. So once again, it actually is not as complicated as it might look. Let's look at the first three lines here. So we're just sending the shader, then we're setting the color to just, you know, normal color in this case, and then the shader texture, we're just going to say, hey, just take this empty thirst texture, and then we're going to draw that particular texture. Now we're going to draw it 10 times because of course, when we've when we've implemented the thirst system, it basically goes from zero to 10. So we basically have 11 different states, zero thirst all the way to 10 thirst full, and then every one of them is going to be filled. Now in this case, this will only draw the empty thirst and the filled thirst actually has to be drawn a little bit of a different way. Now, all of the draw texture ones here, right? So the X, then negative 94, and then plus all of this craziness, this has all been calculated beforehand so that I have it neatly set up at the correct place where I want it to. This just comes down to trying out a bunch of different values and just making sure that everything works fine. Now, it's very important that your X and your Y are definitely dependent on your width and your height of the actual window, because if they aren't, then the position would change if you change the size of the window, which of course is not something that you would want. To now also add the filled thirst texture, we're first of all going to set the texture right here, and then we're going to make another for loop, and this is going to look something like this. So the general idea is that we're basically going through the same idea, right? We're going through the same for loop in this case, but what we're doing is we're basically getting the instance of this particular player. Now we can do this, right? Getting the instance of the player because we know this ever only happens on the client. So we know that only one player is ever available. We're getting the persistent data and getting the thirst value there. And if it is more than I, right? So then we're basically drawing a particular texture. And if it isn't, then we're just going to break out of the for loop, meaning basically we're basically going to draw as many filled thirst vials as we have a thirst variable in this case. So that is pretty much all that we're doing here. Now let's actually register this thirst HUD overlay. How do we do this? Well, in the tutorial mode client class, we just have to add this to the HUD render callback event. So HUD render callback dot event dot register and then making a new thirst HUD overlay. And that is pretty much all that we need to do here. Now, this will already add the overlay to our game. Now, once again, what's very important is that I've mentioned this last time, this will not actually display the filled ones right now, because the data is not properly synchronized to the client. We're just still going to take a look at it just so that we see, you know, that this works, and then we're going to synchronize it properly. And then the entire system will finally work. So let's go into the game. And first of all, see our custom HUD. All right, so we find ourselves in Minecraft. And as you can clearly see, we already have a custom HUD. And if we go into the survival mode, you can see it also, you know, roughly speaking, 
sort of fits in there. Now it is being overlaid on top of this. But once again, this is why I'm saying that the entire system is not quite ready or quite to be used. And you can also see it does not properly synchronize, right? Here we have Thirst 8, but are 8 vials being filled? No, they are not, because once again, the synchronization is not quite done just yet. This is one more step that we need to do. We need to add one more custom packet so that this also synchronizes. And then after that is done, we have the entire system fully done and it's going to be absolutely amazing. But this already pretty freaking good progress. All right, so as I've said, we need to synchronize this. Now this happens in the thirst data right here. You can see the synchronization right here and right here. So for that, we somehow need to synchronize it. For this, we need another packet. So we're just going to create a new Java class here. This is going to be the thirst sync data s to C packet because this time we're actually sending it from the server to the client. And for this, we're actually going to need a little bit of a different receive method. Now it looks a little bit different. Now let's just let's just add it and you will see it's not actually that complicated. If we come if we take a look at this, this we had the server, server player, server play network handler, packet buffer, and a packet sender, while the server to client has a Minecraft client, the client play network handler, the packet byte buffer, and the packet sender. So it's not too different, but overall that is it. Now here, we're literally just putting the thirst right in here, and we're actually reading something from the buffer. So this time, we actually do need additional data added to the actual message, in this case to the packet, but once again, this is going to be no worries at all. So we're first of all going to register this packet in the mod messages and this time in the S2C packets method, of course, because this is server to client. This works by calling client play networking dot register register global receivers, this time putting in the thirst sync ID and then saying thirst sync data S2C packet colon colon receive ending with a semicolon and no errors should be present. Once again, if this is done correctly, then everything should work totally fine in this case. The message is now being properly registered, but now, of course, we still need to somehow send that message. And we have seen how to send messages before, right? In our key input handler right here, right? We're sending the drinking ID message and that should and that all works fine. But where should we send this sync data packet, right? From where should we send this? Well, we're going to send it in the thirst data right here. We basically always want to synchronize when the thirst is added or the thirst is removed. We don't want to synchronize every tick because that would be just way too many packets being sent. We only want to send the packet in this case when we actually synchronize or change the thirst data because otherwise, of course, they don't need to be changed. So for this, I will just copy over the method. Now, it is very, very straightforward. So you can see this is just the thirst sync ID over here. So you can see we're just creating a new buffer over here. We're writing in the thirst that we're passing into this sync thirst method and then we're sending it via the server play network to this specific player over here this message and then just this buffer nothing too crazy over here and nothing actually crazy going on so we can then do this sync thirst over here and then we're just going to call the same thing right here after it is being basically modified over here which is synchronizing the actual data to this particular player what's very important is that this of course always happens on the server right the add thirst and the remove first where they called middle mouse button click you can see this happens on the server tick events right so this is always on the server and then same with the add thirst this is always called in the receive method of the drinking client to server packet meaning that this also only or ever happens on the server that is why we can be sure that we can cast this to a server player entity once again very important in that moment and then here i actually also want to synchronize this now the reason for this is just that so when we actually do press the o key somewhere else that this synchronizes because there is a one tiny thing that is kind of a weird thing Let's just add this first and then I will explain why this is kind of necessary to have. So there you go. Shouldn't be anything too crazy, right? We're just once again making the player in I entity data saver, getting the persistent data thirst here and then just putting it in there. Why I want to have this is when we first join the world, we're actually not going to have the data synchronized. This means that our display is actually not going to be, well, displaying what the actual contents of the thirst is, we first have to, well, either get a thirst removed or we first have to synchronize it ourselves. I have not been able to get it to work. If anyone else gets it to work, then please do notify me. I would be more than happy to sort of add an addendum or something like that to it or add a gist in the comments below, right, to basically send people to how to do it. But I was not able to do it. Using the entity join world event or something like that where it's called, then the issue there is that the client is always null, right? So this client right here is always null at that point in time and it doesn't just work. And if I say, hey, don't do it when you're null, then it doesn't 
doesn't fire it, so I don't know how to do it. If anyone knows, please do feel free to tell me. But whatever the case may be, this is all that we need to do. Now the player should also synchronize the thirst from the server to the client. And of course, because our HUD, right, our HUD is client only, now this should also be properly done. So if we get the persistent data thirst right here, then we should actually get a proper number. And then it should also be displaying the filled thirst vials. And thus we have our system complete. Let's go into the game once more and see if it works. All right, so we finally says in Minecraft, I've paused just in case so we can see that currently there are no, well, basically it's still all empty. Now, as soon as I go out of the menu, I'm going to press O to basically show, hey, there's no water around. And this is also going to synchronize the data. And then we should see, I think, eight vials basically file, fill up. So let's see. There we go. So we have seven thirst and now the vials are also filled up. Now, the reason I've basically, this is the reason why I've paused via the escape menu, because of course the remove thirst would immediately synchronize this and then we'll basically change it but you can all you've already seen that it basically removes one let's just wait for another remove there we go so now we only have five thirst and we can see five thirst now four and if i you know drink up you can see they're filling up and at 10 you know i'm basically capped at 10 and then at some point when the first removes itself again then we're going to see we only have a nine vials filled so this is pretty freaking awesome right a very very rough system of the thirst once again this is definitely not bulletproof for actual use in a mod this is genuinely just for you to see okay this is one example of how it might work and how it might look like and how you can properly do it so you definitely would have to do some more work yourself on you know adding something like this proper to the game but it might be a very very good place to start well, and that concludes the four part series on adding a rough thirst system to Minecraft. I genuinely hope you found this useful and you learned something new and I'll see you all in the next tutorial. So yeah.